Hello everyone, Krebs Koho here, ready to bring you guys another exciting replay. Now then, this is going to be a 1v1 on Angleville. It seems like Angleville has been such a popular map recently. And as you guys know, this is 2.602. It is fully out. We're all fully aware about this. And I was having a quick look on the game replays uh, website, just looking for some replays, and I saw this one. And it had sort of a funny title. It was uh, the first 2.602 epic tank battle. And so that sounded pretty, pretty good to me and a lot of expectations. So if you guys, I just had a quick skim over this. If you guys have been sick of all of this uh, infantry and been wondering where has all this metal and wheels been, well, this is definitely going to satisfy your urge. Now this is going to be a game featuring Mr. SIT Raptor, Sit Raptor, playing as the Brits on the southern side of Angleville versus his opponent, Mr. R. Awardna. Awardna, I hope I said that right, playing as the PE on the northern side. Now then, Mr. Uh, Brit player has been going for his Brit, his uh, lieutenant right away, getting his command truck set, uh, set up, all packed up. And going to be deploying it right over here on this munitions point. So pretty cool that he's doing that. Obviously trying to set up a forward sort of base. Locking down this sector. Very defensive sort of area as well. As you guys can see the hedgerows. The hedgerows here. The house here. And a whole bunch of little obstacles. So it's sort of interesting to take into uh, account of all this sort of stuff. And as we can see just the command truck ramming right through the wall. That must be some sort of a uh, heavy sort of crush. I doubt it could actually go over tank traps. But no, it can only go over medium cover and right through the wall, as you guys seen. So no trouble, no damage on the truck. Um, so we also got the PE player over here. Uh, just capping away with his cat and crad. He has his one, two, possibly third squad. Yes, he does have his third PG squad out. And they are just running about, just trying to do what they can. Now, what exactly they will be doing, I'm not exactly sure. It looks like these two uh, squads are going to be teaming up together and possibly trying to find some sort of action. And they most likely will. Now, we've also got the recon squad just capping away as usual. Capping this, uh, me uh, this medium fuel point. Should I say this high fuel point over here. And just going away to... I don't, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe cap away at the uh, PE point. But it doesn't look like they're going to manage that because they have been sort of met by the PE players. Two squads, one taking defensive position with their Gewehr 43 in the house, but getting out because the Brits obviously realize they are no match for this. They're going to go straight for the uh, cutoff point. Now that we also have the Lieutenant and another infantry section coming out from SIT Raptor. Now this is going to be a sort of slow start. I, as I said, I had a bit of a skim over and uh, there are a number of infantry. But it definitely, definitely picks up in the end, and I'm, I'm very sure it's going to keep you guys on your, the edge of your seat, so to say. So anyway, we got these, uh, this rifle section just uh, taking some shots on the uh, Gewehr 43s just nearby, getting some green cover, and using a sniper ability. Wow, taking out the entire Gewehr 43 section, a very big loss for the PE at the beginning especially since they need these PGs now then as we saw here we have this little trap right over here set up by the Ketten Krad BAM exploding right on the lieutenant I believe also taking out one little gentleman over here and that is a quite a big loss for losing the lieutenant now there's quite a big uh, misconception that if you lose a lieutenant do you have to rebuild it in order to go to field support truck as no as long as you have the or built the lieutenant once then that is okay you can go on to field support so no problem in that respect so we do have a little brand carrier out as well upgraded to his vickers so that is going to be providing a lot of house so obviously the uh, PG see this this and they need to get away but the brand carrier not being Sitting, not going to sit around, it's just going to go right up to these PGs and start mauling them, suppressing them right behind their hay bale cover. So a lot of action on the go right from the beginning. This is asking for a lot of um, attention, this Bren Carrier, and that is what it's getting. It's actually getting a lot of damage, and you might be sort of thinking, why would a, a Bren Carrier 
um, engage a PG squad, or any squad for that matter, so close range, especially when it's taking so much damage. Well, if you look at the uh, munitions income and the munitions at the moment, it's really no problem whatsoever, because as you guys know, the prank carrier has its own self repair ability, 35 ammunition, and starts going with a wrench above it, and that will start repairing it. So, a uh, very good use of the brain carrier at the moment, just going right behind the cover. Looks like it's going to be doing this as well, plowing right through a little wagon and taking more shots on the PG's close range. You can see this a bit closer. Now, as you guys can see, these PG's very, very reluctant of moving away. They want to stay there and fight the brain carrier. They're thinking maybe they can destroy it, but little do they know that the uh, self-repair ability is just easily accessible. Now then, the P the other infantry sections from the Brit are just setting up over here, uh, capping away some more points. So it seems like the entire defensive line is on the right-hand side for the Brits, and the Panzer, the little Ket and Krad, is actually sneaked in between the MGs, the little uh, Vickers emplacements, and actually is capping away at the first point. So that's sort of interesting. Um, a thing that I would actually like to mention, um, we do have a field support truck out. A thing that I would actually like to mention for PE strategies, the thing that's sort of overlooked, especially pre 2.602, is the Vampire Half Track. Now, I know in my uh, previous games, me and Ryan have been trying out different things, and the PE um, Vampire Half Track is sort of given a very, very good buff. It can now camouflage. And by, say, for example, putting that uh, Vampire Half Track in the first initial sector, so over here, in the first initial sector, you can basically cut off a Brit's entire resource income by half. Now that is something to keep note of. Obviously, maybe these players don't know that just yet. But anyway, it's something to keep note of. So back to the replay. We do have more engagements happening. The Brent carrier is down to almost no health. It already had its uh, self-repair ability activated. I'm not sure why it didn't get out of there. Um, kind of unfortunate loss for the Brits. Um, they already lost their lieutenant, they already lost their brand carrier, the PE already lost the Panzer Grenadier squad and had to retreat multiple times, but we do have a Bren gun on the infantry section. Now this is going to be ripping apart the infantry and as you guys can see, one little Panzer Elite squad just getting away. Just, just, just. And here we go, another scorched uh, booby trap coming down on the... Uh, PE's points. Whether the Brit actually realizes, um, I'm not exactly sure, we'll have to see. But that obviously means that the PE has gone for his, um, his Scorched Earth Doctrine. And so that's what we, that's why we have been seeing the booby traps so early. So that is a very early choice of, of, uh, Scorched Earth. But then again, that is actually required. You need to, um, get Scorched Earth as soon as possible to maximize the booby traps because there are a lot of infantry in the early game as you guys are fully aware and this little fella are taking a bunch of flaming damage. Oh the pain. So we have the field support truck setting up on the high field point over here so plus 26 plus 26 for the munitions and so that is a lot of income. Obviously not a lot of points taken for the Brits at the moment, but look at their resource income. That is quite a lot for it, considering that there's so few uh, points taken for them. Now, the PE have an, uh, their armored car. Let's see what they're actually building in their base. They actually went for a Kampf group of company and jumped immediately right to their Panzer Jaeger command. Um, also a little bunch of gentlemen just uh, reinforcing over here. Now then, the P Panzer Jaeger command, we saw the armored car coming out. And that is going to provide a lot of hassle power, especially when there's no Bren carrier on the field at the moment. It can't use its ant, um, armor piercing rounds since it's not even existed anymore. <laughs> so that's a, sort of a bad thing. If it was on the field, it would actually do a lot of damage to the armor card. But at the moment, even um, even the Bren guns are going to have a trouble have trouble actually taking out this uh, armor car because the armor car could easily, easily, easily get away from all the uh, infantry sections. So what the what the uh, Brits are going to do about this armored car, we will have to see. Obviously, there's a support truck out, and we do have our little Stuart tank coming out. So that is a perfect, 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 perfect uh, way of countering the armored car. The armored car cannot pa uh, pierce the little Stuart. No way, shape, or form. And we also have a little better sapper that's going to be coming out straight after this little queue is finished. The recon squad is engaging the Panzer Grenadiers. Obviously, you're going to have to pull back a little bit just to the tank because there's a, an incoming squad of MP44s. But at the moment, 
the PE have no counter to the tanks right now. The armored car is sort of reluctant about even coming, but what is it going to come in? Very strange. Even a few slight rear armor shots have managed to take a tiny, tiny slither of health, if you guys can see that, on the steward tank, but nothing even um, feasible. So the entire army just having to retreat. The steward tank being kind of reluctant to even uh, rush into the base, but, 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 we did have the Panzer Command upgrade to unlock their Martyr 3 tank hunter, and now we do have the Martyr 3 on the, on the field. So as soon as we had one counter for the armored car come out, we have an immediate, immediate counter for the um, Stuart tank now by the Martyr. Now this is going to be kind of interesting to see what could happen. The Stuart could actually do a decent job against the Martyr at the moment if it could circle it. But then again, it does look like if we switch on over to a Wardna, that another tank hunter is going to be coming out. Now also, this is going to be a good sort of perspective for me to look at at the PE at the moment because we can see all the booby traps. So we do have one on the VPs. I'm guessing there was actually another one on the VP on the um, eastern side of the map as well. But that was blowing up. And here we are, one shot, taking it down to half health. Obviously, SIT Raptor does not see this, and one more shot could easily take out the Stuart. Why he's not retreating, I do not know. Maybe he is lost in his micro, maybe he's lost in a dream. That is one thing I cannot actually decipher out of this SIT at the moment. But he does have a little, another little Stuart. Now, two little Stuarts could have done a decent job against the uh, Martyr, especially before this other Martyr came out. But, unfortunately, one little Stuart is not going to do much, so... There really needs to be more anti-tank on the field. The um, sappers are definitely a good way of uh, for uh, a counter. As soon as they get their piots, they will do a decent job at taking out the tanks. Now, I believe the piots in 2.602 actually got a sort of a little um, nerf. They got a, a nerf against the against infantry so they're actually not as effective against them and rightly so because they are anti-tanks but I do believe they got some buffs of respect but I can't really remember exactly what it was. What that is then I would recommend looking at the release notes. But anyway the second little steward going down, huge losses, the entire uh, Brit army having to retreat at the moment, captain even running away, it seems like there is a loss of leadership and damn but should I say BAM, <laughs> the captain going down, huge losses, that was plus 18 XP to one of the martyrs I believe that took it out, um, and we just have a sort of recuperation of the Brits, so we do have two uh, sapper squads, one with their, with their little uh, repair wrench and one with their peons, Obviously putting down some sandbags at the moment, setting a defensive line just to prep themselves up for any sort of oncoming uh, martyr attack. And that would be totally feasible at the moment. If the uh, martyrs would actually move in, they could do a decent amount of damage to the P uh, to the Brits at the moment since th there's only one uh, sappers with Piats at the moment. Now then, see a variety of squ uh, little uh, points actually booby trapped. Also have this little... Uh, trench made right beside the base all these little defensive lines now we also do have the panzer shreks coming out from the uh, PE so obviously getting that from their account group a company and basically a counter for everything so they have their mp44s they have their panzer shreks and as I was saying in the earlier and earlier this uh, replay just a few minutes ago the vampire half track obviously comes out from t1 of your PE and by having that, you obviously can't, uh, you wouldn't usually go for your account group of company, so you wouldn't be able to get those Panzer Shreks. But then again, there's other ways to go about it. And the Vampire Half Track is very, very um, useful. But I will talk about that in another replay. So we have this movement of men moving across the map at the moment, just chased away those PE squads. It looks like they might be coming in for a, a back cap on the cutoff point. And whether they do that, they need to be quite careful because there is uh, a booby trap. But it looks like they were met from quite a bit of opposition, so they are not going to even bother. One Piat shot right there, I believe, just taking the entire uh, armored car almost entirely out. And it looks like it was finished off by the brain carrier, brain guns there. 
So we have more rifle shots going off. The Panzer Lee in desperate trouble. They do not have much in terms of anti-infantry at the moment. These martyrs are not good with what shape or form. What was actually what actually took that out there? That was a big blast for um, something. I'm not exactly sure what that might have been. And does oh there we go. So if you guys see this white sort of outline, that is sector artillery from the Panzer Lee. That is part of their scorched earth. 200 ammunition. That is quite an investment. I'm actually quite reluctant to go for sector artillery myself. 200 ammunition, as I said, is a lot to invest in on an ability that only works in the sector. Yes, it is very good at defense, but then again, it only works in that sector. I sort of personally wish that they um, made sector artillery like the one in Company of Heroes Online. So if you look at this sort of uh, reticle on the map, this sort of big circle, basically in Company of Heroes Online, that was the sector. So this entire uh, circle was um, the area. So I think that would actually be a more of appropriate sort of thing than just a sector alone. But anyway, that is just my opinion. Now we do have the commandos coming out from Mr. SIT Raptor. These guys are very, very hardy. Got their grenades, got their smoke bombs. Obviously going to be very good at taking out infantry. So obviously this is going to be um, quite a useful strategy for the uh, for the Brits. They will be able to get their triangulation and they will be able to see their their opponent, what they're doing. So it's quite an interesting strategy, quite an interesting sort of doctrine to go for for the Brits. And basically it seems like quite a lull mo moment. The glider is still here. I'm not exactly sure why the um, Panzer Elite have not taken out since they could get some XP from that. Also a sitting Panzer Strike right there. Hmm, kind of interesting. Somebody needs to pick that one up. Also, just a recuperation. So we do have the little casualty clearing center coming out. Obviously going to be good for uh, healing the men and for picking up any guys. But if you guys just look at this, it's huge defensive line. The entire base is over here. So the entire base is re relocated from this area all the way over here. And also the armor command truck coming out. So it is set situated on the munitions high point over here. So if you switch on over to, I actually paused the replay accidentally there. <clears throat> if you switch on over to the Brit uh, SIT, 64 ammunition, that is a lot. So as you guys can see, 26, 26, and plus this little ammunition point over here, that is that adds up to a lot of um, ammunition. So they will obviously have um, access to a lot of their upgrades, and that's very good to keep a note of. Also, later on when the uh, artillery comes out from this doctrine, then no problem. So, Panzer Grenadiers is capping away at the victory points. It does look like they're quite intent on trying to win this by points. And no problem, really. Obviously met by all these, uh, this big swarm of guys. Accompanied by their lieutenant. Obviously a lieutenant giving a lot of aura bonuses to the, uh, Brits, so no problem there. And I also believe the aura was actually increased by about 5 meters on the lieutenant, so that's why we still see this bigger range of um, bonuses on the infantry. And here we go, a slight little conflict. The Panzer Grenadiers meeting the Brits right on the intersection. It's just a flying amount of shells. The Panzer Elite obviously losing this battle. They were just thrown completely off. Losses for the Panzer Elite. And quickly engaging another Panzer Shrek squad. This is going to be no problem against uh, against the Panzer Shreks. The Brens doing a very decent job at mauling apart the uh, Panzer Elite. And what is this? We also have a Panzer IV from Awardna. So that means he has gone for his Panzer Support Command, and that will be very, very good at anti-infantry. Now I do like how these players know exactly um, what to get for the doctrines. They are not noobs in any shape or form. Doing a very good job. And here we have a bit of heroic charge from the veteran C2 lieutenant, obviously unlocking that as he uh, vetted up. And as you guys can see, just closing in on that martyr and doing a very decent job. And I actually like what the Panzer IV is doing. It's focusing on the lieutenant. And that is what you should be doing. The lieutenant is obviously the prime target. If you can take it out, then obviously then it's going to be a lot better. Also, believe the lieutenant also got some uh, survivability um, 
but over its veterancy. Sectors. I believe that it got some sort of accuracy, received accuracy, actually got um, decreased received accuracy uh, with its veterancy now in 2.602. So something to, interesting to note, obviously it's going to be able to survive a lot more if it's not going to be taking as much hits. Also a little demolition, uh, <laughs> little demolition coming down from the commandos and right on the crossroads as well so right before here and that is going to be obviously causing a lot of havoc if some men will cross over it okay so just more and more of these booby traps if you guys can hear that little click just the ch -ch, and then the bam the explosion all this incendiary sort of stuff that is the booby trap now that is going to be very micro intensive if you're any if you're ever reversing a PE player that's doing such a sort of uh, doctrine strategy. You're obviously going to have to be careful. You're going to have to cap away, activate the trap, and then move back in order to avoid that trap. So the Cromwell coming out from the armor command truck, obviously going to be quite good for uh, providing support for the infantry. It's always good to have a mixture of armor with your infantry just so you can have a bit of pushing power and so another sector artillery coming out for Mr. Awardna obviously very keen on keeping this area he's even booby trapped it to hell and he's doing some more on the munitions point over here so very nice use of that and sector artillery providing oh a lot a lot I believe 120 seconds worth of artillery in that sector so it's going to be very difficult for the uh, for the Brits to even cap away at that place and oh, jeez, if you guys just look at all these booby traps, there's even a booby trap in this building. So anywhere you go, even if you want to take cover in that building, it's going to be very, very deadly. What you might have to try and do is get in the building and retreat immediately. And oh no, the Panzer Grenadier is going down. Oh jeez, and the Panzer Shrek being taken by the commandos. What horrible losses as these gentlemen are just rolling on the floor to their sad little deaths. How horrible. So the commandos of their Panzer Shrek now, they're newly, newly gained one. They're obviously very happy about it. Setting up a sort of triad detector for radio tri triangulation in a very um, weird place, should I add. Usually if you're going to be putting up triangulation, you might want to put it in the corners of the map and not on the battlefield, uh, just so that your opponent doesn't actually find them. But fair enough, I'm not exactly sure what the reason behind was that that was but oh well um, so we do have a smoke bomb coming down from the commandos and that was providing a lot of uh, uh, cover for them so they weren't gonna get hit as much and that is basically for bullet damage and incoming turret shells and when they're so close even with the Panzer Shrek they'll still be able to just hit these uh, Panzer Force although not being too careful with uh, his units. He did lose his commandos, and that looks like the little lieutenant, sir, right on the ground as well. So losing his uh, second veterancy lieutenant? That's a big loss for uh, a Brit. So if you switch on over to SIT, and yes, he has lost his lieutenant, he has lost commando squad, so that is being much, much, much too bold with his units. So this Panzer Shrek can easily go back in the hands of the Panzer Elite, and I wouldn't doubt if that happens. And the little radio triangulation was actually taken up, uh, found, and destroyed. So, definitely uh, not the best of places as I was stressing. It should be in the corners of the map so you can get a bigger area and so it won't be found. Okay, so another little booby trap going off. The, pans the Brits obviously realizing this, but taking kind of a lot of damage from that, even though they avoided it. So that's so annoying just because um, of all those booby traps there. But we have an incoming movement of squads now capping away at the victory point after this uh, after that sector artillery is finally diminished and gone now we do have the little 25 pounder artillery barrage and the decoy artillery barrage out from the brits so this could mean a lot of tactical options usually the people like to duke out the fake artillery uh, when they're on the retreat or when they're trying to do a tactical sort of attack so that will be kind of interesting to see. Now just a, a recuperation of guys obviously healing up and a little bit of uh, medics just picking up the wounded. So very good use of that. I suppose the nice thing about the booby traps being so close is that the medics can pick them up nearby.
I suppose that's the one positive thing about it. And just a bit of repairing and another little lull in the game. So this is going to be the tanks coming out. So this is just, if you if we look at what sort of tanks are on the field at the moment, there's a Martyr, there's a Panther, so obviously there's a Panther battle group already um, achieved by the PE, there's a Panzer IV, and another Panther, obviously double Panthers from the battle group. On the Brit side, we do have two Cromwells and the Cromwell Command Tank. As you guys can see, I always like this, but there is a slight difference between the Cromwell uh, turret and the Cromwell Command Tank. If you guys can see, it's a dummy and it's actually blocked off on the end. And as you guys can see, a re real nozzle on the end of the Cromwell Tank. So kind of interesting. Also, the Cromwell uh, provides a lot of uh, bonuses for the... Um, Cromwell Command Tank provides a lot of bonuses for the uh, Cromwells and all other Brit tanks. I believe is just mostly to do with reload and cooldown. So obviously they'll be shooting a lot faster with the Cromwell right Command Tank around. And here we go. This looks like a, a bit better for triangulation sort of thing. Although I would actually like it to see, would like to see it around maybe say here, and then somewhere I don't know maybe sneakily over here. Because this is sort of a weird place. As we can see, the triangulation is activated. There's one over here, here, and here. So if you just guys look at the mini-map or the tactical map, that's sort of an odd, awkward place to put it. Usually if you're going to be using triangulation, you want to have it stretch across the entire map so you can see what's happening even in the enemy's t uh, sector. So I'm not exactly sure if he realizes that or not. Maybe he just wants to put down the... Maybe he thinks that only works in his uh, territory. Maybe he's just trying to be defensive about it. But anyway, we have the recon squad taking a bit of damage from the Panther, taking a few shots, losing a few of their little men. Oh, how bad for the little Tommies. But it looks like the battalion is coming. And here we are, the Sherman Firefly, three Qual Cromwells, and the Cromwell Command Tank. Now this is going to be very hard for the Panzer League to take on, because when you've got such a massive force, what do you attack first? Do you attack first the uh, force, or do you attack the Cromwell Command Tank? And actually, you always, always go for the Cromwell Command Tank. You always got to destroy that first, because then the attacking force will not nearly be as effective. And that is the same with lieutenants and captains. Always take out the captains first. But always make sure you do it in force. Because if you're going to be by yourself like this little panther here, you're obviously going to be put in such a bad position. Now we do also have overdrive activated on the little Kromos. And that is how they're flanking around the panther. But not being able to actually do anything at the much at the moment. One Kromos looks like it's about to go down. Can it go down? They're not focusing on taking out this Kromos command tank. I'm not sure why they're not doing that. They really should have been trying to uh, focus on taking out this uh, Kromwell before destroying that other one. I realize it's always good not to have uh, uh, more other tanks fighting you, but then again, as you guys can see, that Kromwell command tank actually got away, so kind of unfortunate. Now the artillery coming down. Oh, could it be a decoy? No, it's a real artillery barrage. Oh my gosh, the Marta 3 and the Panzer Force taking huge damage. Rex, Rex, Rex. And that is what you get for blobbing up all your stuff. Now this is obviously the decoy, not going to be the um, art, the uh, d -d 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 -d. Brits can obviously not throw down two artilleries at the same time without that cooldown going down first. But huge losses for the Panzer Lee, obviously big losses for the Brits as well. So I'd say it's pretty much eye for an eye and even. But we do have a bit of Panzer Grenadiers trying to destroy this Carbo Command Tank. Managed to get it down to half health, but then again, losing um, a bit of de uh, health and a little, a little fellow, and they just desperately got to get out away over there, away from there. Yeah, so there we go. So this Armor Command truck producing another Sherman Firefly, and the tank battles persist. Now this must be getting very annoying for the pants, for the Brits. More booby traps, a one <laughs> sector artillery shell, totally decimating this uh, little Brit squad. Now 200 ammunition for a sector artillery is a lot. But then again, if we look at Mr. Awardna, 200 ammunition, he obviously had quite a surplus if he has 216 right now. Then again, he has a lot of tanks, so he's obviously not investing a lot in terms of 
his uh, his infantry. He doesn't have to upgrade them and so on and so forth. So then again, if he has a surplus, sector artillery is totally viable to get. Okay, so not much happening on the field at the moment. So it seems like sort of waves of attacks that just keep on persisting in this game. So wave after wave after wave. Maybe if we speed it up a little bit until the action. So if I just speed this up until we start seeing some action, then I will slow it down. So it's on two times at the moment. We do have some tanks gathering up over here. We do have a force of Panzer Grenadiers. Also a uh, Burge Tiger coming out. A very good investment by the PE. As you guys can know, pre-2.6, um, pre-2.602, the Panzer Elite were severely sort of, um, put down by the popula population cap of their units. So by having the Burge Tiger out, it would obviously take a lot to, take a lot of population to actually get anything back on the field. So the good thing with the PE in general is that a lot of their units have actually been, uh, have had their population decreased. So especially the Burge Tiger, especially everything else. So it is a lot more viable for the PE to actually get more units now and to actually have that uh, Burge Tiger cap away and get some, or repair those tanks. So Stexter Artillery, is it still activated or is that a separate one? Word, uh, and it does look like another one was actually cold down. So the PE are very, very, very intent on keeping this area. So whatever comes here is going to be shelled. And that is what is happening. Lots of booby traps. And basically being controlled by what was just one PE squad and sector artillery and a few booby traps. So very good use of that. Even though there's nothing here, it's so deadly to even move into. Massive swarm of PE. This looks like the Zerg from <laughs> StarCraft. Obviously not alien-like, but a mass swarm of them. Obviously something to be a bit afraid about. But lots of tanks on the field. The Burge Tiger just managed to repair this uh, little uh, tank. But obviously there's still a load of wrecks. There's the uh, Martyr over here. One Martyr was actually destroyed. So a lot to still be able to... Um, take back So here the force is back again fully operational one Sherman Firefly two Cromwell's and the Cromwell command tank go into veterancy one just now Cromwell command tank or the Cromwell's are gonna have no trouble whatsoever on taking these Panzer Elite as you guys can see quite a blast when they shot shoot them Bam, what was that? That looks like quite an explosive that might have been actually a mine right below the Cromwell and that must have exploded or something because there's no way that uh, a Panzer Shrek shot could easily do such a crater like that. Now we do have the little demolition charge here, still not found by the Panzer Elite. Just sneaking away. Obviously must see it now because he's just a bit reluctant to even move forward. <laughs> there we go, just taking it out. Okay. So anyway, back to uh, the PE. We do have the Hummel coming out from the Scorched Earth. So obviously has gone to the very, very bottom of his command tree. And this will provide a lot of artillery support. Look at this massive turret. Now this is an elephant of a tank. If we could just look at it. It's basically, it looks sort of like a Flak 88 almost. With a big sort of uh, tripod stand on it. Germany is conceding a sector point to the Commonwealth. We must rally. Here we go. Another sector artillery cooldown. So this has been 600 ammunition invested in this little area in just a, such a small points. space of time. If you got the ammunition, I suppose, why not? It's no problem for the uh, PE in terms of that respect. <laughs> this medic just barely dodging artillery fire. Can he pick up the guy without being noticed? It does look like it. It looks like the PR are just going to totally ignore him. Let him do his job. And oh gosh! The <laughs> artillery not letting him do his job. The artillery actually taking better notice of the medic. And totally devastating him. Now we do have a bit of mines from um, SIT. Obviously doing that with the sappers. 
And that must have been what exploded underneath that Cromwell command tank the, uh, just priorly a few minutes ago. Now this lieutenant being a bit too close on what he's doing here. I believe another little medic being taken out. So kind of big losses. Now what is that? That is the Hummel working. That is the Hummel doing its job. It's big nose just shooting right up into the sky. Taking a bunch of uh, artillery shots. But we do have the Brits retaliating with their own little battalion of tanks. Now this is the tank battles. Dun 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 This is what we've been waiting for. The uh, Sherman Firefly doing huge massive piercing damage on the Panther. No problem. These Cromwell Command Tanks are basically acting as a sort of shield. It looks like they're taking uh, shots and hardly being damaged by the Panthers. The Sherman Firefly doing massive massive range on the Panther. Taking it down to half health already. That is very very insane. The Panther Panthers are already damaged. The Birch Tiger obviously getting right in there and trying to repair them. Um, I would like to see more Martyrs. There was a Martyr over here that the PE should have grabbed. They do have the uh, population to do so. Because the more anti-tank you have, the more better it will be. Now what is this? A little artillery strike coming down from the Brits. Uh, damaging the Panther Panzer IV to half health. And basically everything is very much so damaged. The Brits have such a good opportunity to move in right now. If only they would do so. If only, if only. Now it looks like the Peter are actually being quite sneaky and uh, trying to cut off their point over here. They most likely will booby trap it if they are not re um, retaliated upon. And obviously the Brits cannot get these points if they are cut off from their base. Okay, so a big battalion of guys. I really want to see the action unfold. I really want to see them move in right now. If I'm rooting for the Brits, I really want to see them move in at the moment. Four-man squads uh, finally achieved on the Panzer Grenadiers. So this will especially help since um, the Panzer Shreks have a better survivability now. Also picking up a Piet in the meantime. So they have Panzer, Panzer Shrek and a, <laughs> that little Piet. So good anti-tank. I like seeing that. And here we are, this looks like the beginning of the attack, the beginning of the end, or possibly the start of the end, whatever you want to take it as. So they're trying to focus on taking out these um, little Panzer Shreks, Panzer Grenadiers at the moment. Obviously one Shrek hitting the uh, Chromo, but hardly doing any damage to it, that's kind of surprising. So the first Tiger taking their shots, they, another Panzer Shrek squad moving in. Oh my gosh, absolutely de devastating. As, we, as you guys can see, hitting this uh, Cromwell tank and barely doing any damage to it. It really needs to get on the uh, rear armor. But one little man, one little man, one little Panzer Grenadier, you need to get out of there. He's about to be aggressed on, that is what has been happening. So there we go, taking a side armor shot and that looks a lot better. Now the Hummel coming down, forcing the Brits to move. Can it land on the Sappers? And oh my gosh, yes it did. It absolutely devastated the Sappers. Now that is doing a huge amount of damage. I'm surprised they're not actually retreating, but maybe they are trying to just dodge the artillery. Okay, Sappers, you really, really need to get repaired up. It looks like one Panther was taken out there by the huge range of the Firefly, but they really, the uh, PE really need to try and take out what's remaining of the tanks. They really just need to take out the Sherman Firefly. Obviously, the Sherman Firefly is just backing off, using its very massive uh, range to just hit the uh, or snipe the Panther. So, is, it, is the Panther going to be able to take it out? Let's see. Oh, at this rate, yes, it is able to. So, thank God the Panther has been able to do so. But in the meantime, he actually almost he's pretty much destroyed. Losing almost its entire health trying to take down the last slither of health on a uh, Sherman Firefly. So this Panther finally getting its uh, Veteran C1 on the on defense, so obviously going to help a lot. The Birch Tiger are repairing another Panther, so this is going to be uh, a reproducible, reproducible zombie squad or zombie force of tanks. So if you thought medics were bad, well welcome to the tank version. <laughs> And now what is this? The Flak Vierlings are attacking the little glider. Oh my gosh, the HQ glider as well. Well, nothing came out of the HQ glider. That looked like it was just meant to be a sort of a scouting glider. I have never seen anyone use that. 
that was meant to be a sc scout and glider. Obviously, nothing was going to come out of that. Um, but in the meantime, getting that sort of sight was able to cool down a little artillery strike and badly damage the uh, Panzerli, also being able to scout what they have. So switching on over to SIT Raptor, 200 ammunition or 200 manpower for that HQ glider. I suppose that is totally viable because if we look at um, the Brits income right now 1000 uh, over 1000 manpower saved up so that is no problem they've got loads of ammunition loads of fuel so if they can uh, just waste their resources on glider HQ <laughs> scouting sort of stuff then why not now we do have the uh, the strategic point blown up by the Panzer Elite it ha does have to re be repaired that's part of scorched earth doctrine and just being repaired, obviously very annoying in order to do so. And as we can see, there's little masks on the infantry sections. We would not normally see this. We would usually see this on, say, the engineers and such. But it is an animation animation that is available to all the um, infantry units, especially when they need to repair such strategic points. And are they going to keep on repairing, even though it's after it's repaired? And hmm, no, it doesn't look like it. They're actually repairing it now. And a booby trap. Oh, how strange! It looks like they had to. <laughs> it looks like there's a booby trap and the the uh, point was scorched. So how annoying indeed. But at last, it looks like the point is being taken back. Now it's mortar half track. There was a mortar half track somewhere. Just doing something. It should be trying to bomb this area. That's why I would think that the uh, half track should be doing. But another little artillery strike coming down. Everything being man uh, able to just. Uh, run away from that artillery strike so no problem for the PE maintaining their side on the right hand and just barely keeping their side on the left hand side the PE are obviously going to have to move in if they're going to win this by VPs because as we, you guys can see one VP and another VP over here in the hands of the Brits so here is the attack that we've been waiting for. Two Panthers engaging the force, trying to take out the Sherman Firefly. But it looks like we have some flanking squads with Bren carriers. This could, or Brents, this could be very bad for the Panthers if they're not a bit more careful. Um, an artillery strike coming down, a real one as well, not decoy. Uh, so this could be very, very bad for the Panthers. And it looks like one is actually taken out, especially the one with the veteran seat. So kind of fortunate losses. As you guys can see, the um, Panthers, they should really be focusing on not the attacking force, but rather the uh, Cromwell command attack and trying to take that out. But unfortunately, they're not doing that. Now, both Panthers going down without any losses from the Brits. That is very unfortunate. What the Panzer Lee should have actually done was throw down some Hummel artillery priorly before attacking, engaging with their tanks. Now the Birch Tiger is very much exposed. It's being way too bold and frontal in trying to get back this Panther. Panther wreck. And it is taking a bit of flak in attack, so be careful, Mr. Birch Tiger. Be careful indeed. This uh, Panther uh, <laughs> wreck is obviously going to be too much too far to take there we go so the burge tiger going down huge losses for the panzer elite so losing basically almost their entire tank force they lost two panthers they lost the burge tiger so they can't even regain their wrecks so if i was to critique that sort of battle there i would definitely say that you need to be more careful with your tanks if you're if they're getting badly damaged, don't just throw them away. But then again, it looks like he had the manpower. So if you switch back on the Fog of War, I don't know why I did that. And back to Wordna. He does have barely any manpower, but just enough 1,000 to go on another Panther battle group. And so he is moving in straight away. He just tried to do as much damage as possible to take out uh, what he could. But as you guys can see, all these sappers, it's going to be just too hard. What he just needs to do is just focus on the Cromwell command tag. And this is really, really paining me because he's not focusing on the right sort of stuff. And here we do have a little artillery strike coming down. Obviously going to be doing a lot of damage to the, to the sappers. And finally, the Cromwell command, the, uh, oh, 
Was it a Cromwell or was it a Firefly? Not exactly sure. Going down and one Panther very badly damaged being taken out and one Panther left out of the pair that came out from the Panther battle group. And another Firefly as well, so well done to the Panzer Elite. Looks like their losses are sort of making up a bit. We do have something happening here. It looks like the Panzer Grenadiers are just trying to shoot away an armor uh, truck, just helplessly not going to do much. Whoops. And just more engagement of tanks. Cromwells are obviously not going to be able to do that much against the Panther. But with the Piats, this is going to obviously be quite bad. So the Panther is retreating now, falling back. The enemy has struck. But still, the Panther doing quite massive damage on the Cromwell. The Panther Shrek's doing a very good job of taking a big chunk out of that Cromwell. And it does look like more manpower is being saved up by the PE. So most likely going to be another Panther battle group. So this is a very, very bad thing about having so many Panther battle groups. It costs so much, and wow, the <laughs> the mortar half track actually finishing off that little Cromwell tank, taking it down from its last health to zero. So we do have a bit of mines coming down from SIT Raptor, obviously setting a defensive line because he does not have anything in terms of tanks. All he has is just his Cromwell command tank. So these mines are definitely going to be a very good investment. He needs to put down more, and that is what he's doing. Putting them behind the strategic point. I'm not actually sure about that. He should put them in some uh, other places because the tanks will obviously go around the strate strategic point rather than through it. And so the Brits are definitely moving in now. Attention. The enemy advances. But as for the Panther, I believe what happened to the other Panther? Awardna is down to basically his last few uh, tanks, his last few squads. He's obviously saving up for his Panther battle group as well. He's in kind of a bad position, but then again, all the all the, uh, the players are in a bad position. But the Brits obviously um, have a lot more in terms of infantry at the moment. So if you just look at the wrecks on the field, wow. Have you guys seen this many wrecks? Just the smoke rising, the scorched earth, the craters, death, destruction, the gliders all destroyed. Oh well, but anyway, more exciting stuff, more artillery coming down, and another little... Ooh. Another little uh, scout car adding to the wrecks. Now, I'm not exactly sure, I don't think that was actually the Hummel that took it out, I believe that was the Brit artillery actually falling down and taking it out. So, it looks like one pa uh, VP to the Panzer Elite, one VP to the Brits, and it looks like the second one just on the way for the Brits as well. Now, the Panther group is, battle group is activated yet again, so we have another two Panthers on the field. Just trying to do what they can. Now, is there any tanks? There's only one Cromwell and one Sherman Firefly. Okay, so that's a sort of recuperation of the tanks, so no problem. If you switch on over to Mr. SIT Raptor, he does have a very large fuel income, 36, and he has loads of fuel. What he's suffering in at the moment is just his manpower. So the Brents are actually cl uh, closing down this Panther, just keeping it there for the Sherman Firefly to engage. Now, if the Cromwell command tank nearby, it's obviously going to be shooting a lot faster than it would normally by itself. And with this good penetration, the Panther's rear armor and side armor facing towards the Sherman Firefly is going to obviously take a lot of damage. Now the second Panther is actually being engaged by the Brens as well, being locked down buttons. And here we go! Just what the Doctor ordered. The Panther, the uh, Panzer Elite getting uh, an artillery barrage from the Hummel. If only it was a bit more up here. If only it was a bit more up here, it would do more damage, but it's still doing quite a decent job. The medic's going to work, it looks like, picking up the wounded, dead, and doing what they can. Now, this panther has actually been immobilized, from what I do not exactly know, but it has been immobilized, it cannot move. Its other brother panther is just uh, shooting away. We do have a Sherman Firefly coming out of the command, armor command truck, but it is being engaged by both panthers and it's going to take a lot of damage. Now, what else is happening on the field? 
there's not much. It looks like the Pan Pan uh, Brits are just trying to do what they can in defending their home. Throwing down some uh, decoy artillery, it looks like, just to try and chase away the Panthers. But this uh, armored truck is does look like it's going to be going down. This Panther is going to have a very bad day and mostly be destroyed. And yes, look at the wrecks flying in pieces. The wheels just bouncing along everywhere. The armored command truck being taken out. Big losses for uh, SIT Raptor, but not a huge loss as he can call on another uh, command truck from his HQ. And that is what he's do doing. Another armor command truck on the way, but obviously this is going to be a delay of getting more tanks. So if somehow, if somehow, 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 the PE can actually get another Panther Battle Group, they could do some serious damage in the meantime. But obviously they cannot do that since they only have 400 manpower. They're still a bit, bit away. So watch out, PE. As we can see, these gentlemen flying right in the air, doing a bit of their own gymnastics, their own acrobatics. The Hubble throwing down its uh, a bit more artillery, doing quite a bit of damage on the tanks. Panther just trying to do what it can. Is this a real artillery barrage? And no, it's just decoy. But just in case, the Panzer Grenadier squads are retreating, and so is the Panther. So the Panther very, very damaged at the moment. Really need to be repaired. But then again, repaired with what? There's not even a Burge Tiger. There's only a single Panzer Grenadier squad on the field. So if a Wordnet is going to be able to do anything, he's just saving up for calling another Panther Battle Group, even though he can't repair any of it, any of his tanks. Now this is the thing about unit preservation. You really need to keep the units that repair your tanks alive. So keep your, so keep your. Um, your Panzer Grenadiers and your Burst Tiger alive, just because in the later game it is going to be very important. And here we go, a initial decoy artillery just trying to come down and uh, scare the Panzer Elite. And the real artillery coming down and taking out the last of the Panzer Elite squads. So the Panzer Grenadier down, the Panther tank going down, the Hummel just, I don't even know, the Hummel is just sitting there all afraid. Now both Black Veerlings going down, Sector Artillery has been activated on quite a strange sector, this is our sector over here. Obviously trying to maintain a sort of, sort of defense, uh, but the Sherman Firefly did take a shell to its body from that. Very badly damaged, and if it wasn't for the Sherman Firefly being so damaged at the moment, the, pad, the Brits could easily move in and destroy the rest of the PE. So, Mr. Awardna is just only a few uh, manpower away from his next Panther Battle Group. And there we go, he's just waiting on that. He's probably going to activate it instantly, and... Do, 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 do. There we go, he was just waiting on that, so... One Panther... And where is the other panther? There we go, two panthers coming out. So just what he needed, but then again, even two panthers might have a bit of trouble at the moment, considering that there are so many panzer... Since there are so many Brit squads on the field, panthers are obviously not the best against infantry, um, and these infantry are obviously going to cap a lot. The good thing though, sector artillery, he still has a lot of ammunition, so he still has 200 something, even after activating that sector artillery, so he at least can maintain this area from being capped away from the infantry. Now, I love this. I love, I love, I love this. The Panthers engaging the uh, Brits while they can before the tanks can get um, get to them. Now, the Sherman Firefly, from zero health, basically, to full health. How unfortunate. This is the uh, bad thing about um, if your opponent has good unit preservation. And this is what I was stressing. As long as you keep your Panzer Grenadiers, your repairing squads alive, so your Burge Tiger, your Panzer Grenadiers, your Sappers alive, until the late game, they, prefer, they uh, prove very, very useful, so you can repair your tanks. Otherwise, you won't have much manpower for the climax of the game. So, last few humble shots coming down, taking out um, some damage on the field support truck. Is Panther focusing on. What is this? Focusing somewhere very strange. Okay, on the field support truck, so fair enough. It looked like his turret was actually pointing somewhere down this direction. But the Sherman Firefly doing a bit of penetration on the Panther. Both Panthers very badly damaged at the moment. Um, it does look like Mr. Awardna is saving up for another Panther battle group, but then again, it is still so far away. 278 manpower is still minutes, minutes, minutes away. So that's about three and a half minutes away. Um, which is uh, a lot from zero anyway 
so here we go, the artillery coming down, the badly damaged Panther being taken out, the overdrive activated on the Kromo, the Panther backing up right into its base, trying to do what it can, what it can, but the Kromo having a very hard time of even penetrating the Panther, so I don't know why this Panther is not facing its armor around, if it faces its armor, frontal armor, it could actually have survived that, and unfortunately it's not going to. So it looks like Mr. Mr. Werda is basically saving up for his uh, Panther Battle Group. All he is hoping on for the moment is that his Hummel can somehow win the game. But two Sherman Fireflies on the field needing a repair. And a Cromwell, there's obviously so much from the Brits right now. It's just uh, too much for the Panzer Elite can, to even deal with. So they're obviously saving up for their uh, Panther Battle Group because they have 689, 690 and counting manpower. What can this be? I'll tell you what it can be. It looks like the Hummel is being chased down. Attention. So let's speed this up a little bit. With only 100 points, the just because we can tell the P are just saving up their manpower. Do have another sector artillery coming down here but not being able to cap or protect their little point. So we're back down to one time, so the Panzer League can't protect this point, uh, not not quick enough anyway. So the artillery not be having any sight, cannot do anything. The Hummel finally going down, looking so bad for the Panzer League. All they have is just this little scout armored car that can't even cap. <laughs> so no forces whatsoever. So here we go, the manpower just reaching and they have their final panther battle group. But still, this is just too much. If we switch on over to STI Raptor, see what he has in his base. Look at all of this, all these units compared to what the uh, Panzer Elite have. Panzer Elite have hardly anything, mostly coming down to unit preservation. By just sacrificing the panthers, by not setting up proper defensive lines, they've obviously uh, lost a lot of manpower. Final engagements, what it looks like to a quite a long game, so almost an hour long, just about to happen. The uh, decoy artillery coming down, most likely a real artillery strike coming down sometime soon. But now the base starting to get some attention from the Sherman Fireflies. Three Sherman Fireflies! I'm sorry to say, but there's actually no way that two Panthers can make a comeback from this. Unless they could somehow <laughs> circle the um, Sherman Fireflies and face the rear, their uh, front armor towards them. Maybe they could do something, but highly, highly doubt, highly doubt it. And so the entire Panther Elite base just going down to ashes. Sector artillery being engaged on the uh, little cutoff point over here. Sherman fireflies just moving out of the way, but not taking much damage, if any. Now we do have a Burst Tiger being uh, built, but it's far, far too late. I believe when the Panthers were still on, when the last Panther battle group was on the field, when the Hummel was still alive. Would have been an appropriate time to get the burst dagger. At least they could have repaired some squads, some tanks on the um, western side of the map. But unfortunately, it's far, far too late. So we do have a good game coming down from Awardna, and that is the end of the game. Most likely, anyway. So if you just speed on this, it's up a little bit until the end of the game comes. Burst dagger coming out, the last panther going down. And that looks like that will be the well, it looks like the end of the game anyway. First tiger finally taking out, being taken out, and that is the playback over, guys. Okay, so quick recap on this game. So this was a 2.602 replay featuring the first apparently epic tank battle of 2.602. Now, now then, um, if we're going to be talking about the pros and cons, the British done a very good job with their infantry in the beginning. Unfortunately, not uh, being too careful with their unit preservation in the beginning, um, losing their Brennan carrier and their lieutenant squad. 
So if they kept those alive, they could have done much better. The Panzer Elite, however, should have kept their squads together. As you guys might have seen earlier in the game, they had a bit of squads separated out, leaving themselves open for attack from the Bren Carrier obviously being pushed off. So you really need to focus your guys together. Also, in the late game, the unit preservation of the Panzer Elite was quite atrocious. Um, <laughs> sorry to say, but the Burj Tigers were taken out. They were too bold. The Panthers were too bold. Uh, the Panzer Elite squads, the Panzer Grenadiers were much too bold as well. You, you just need to keep your squads alive, especially the Panzer Grenadiers, since they are so easy to kill, especially when they are down to three man squads, for example. So, all in all, the unit preservation just needs to be upped a bit. The Brits obviously had this on the mark because they were moving their tanks in, in and out of the battle, just keeping the wounded ones back and keeping them alive. Also, one thing you really need to note on is the Cromwell command tank. So Veteran C3 is obviously going to be providing a lot of support for the tanks. If you're going to be uh, engaging a battle, a battalion of tanks, always focus on the Cromwell command tank first so it does not get into veterancy and does not provide that fast bonus on the uh, reload speeds of the tanks. Okay, so I believe that is, should be a summary recap. I hope all of you guys enjoyed this replay. Um, and anyway, I hope we all have a nice day. So this is Krebs Cole, and I will see you guys later.